Hi everyone, myself Varna and today's topic for the class is Energy Metabolism and Nutrition. Here in this class you will uh, learn about certain terminologies which is related to the energy metabolism and uh, some basics on nutrition. So as you all know what is energy and how it is metabolized. How is energy obtained uh, for our normal activity? It is through the diet which we take it. So this energy is utilized by the body for the activities and functions, physical activities and for the functions of our organs, etc. So energy is obtained from the carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Or in these three forms we are having our diet and energy is obtained from these forms and this energy is utilized by for the functions of our organs and also for the physical activities okay moving on to the topic first term calorific value what is calorific value the definition given is it is the energy content of a food which is measured in calories one calorie is the heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water through one degree celsius and it is expressed in kilocalories kcal one kcal is equal to thousand calories the next term is respiratory quotient it is defined as a ratio of volume of carbon dioxide produced in liter per gram to the oxygen consumed in liter per gram RQ of carb is 1, whereas fat is 0 0.7 and proteins is 0 0.8. When the rate of utilization of the fat increases in relation to the carb, the RQ is found to be falling and this condition is seen in diabetes mellitus. The respiratory quotient is lowest when ketolysis is very active. Moving on to the energy requirement of a normal person. The energy requirement of a normal person is def uh, can be defined by the BMR, SDA and also by the extra energy used for physical activities. So let's see what each term means. That is uh, BMR, SDA. BMR, it is the basal metabolic rate. It is defined as the energy required by an awake individual during physical, emotional and digestive rest. So the person is awake and he is in physical, emotional and digestive rest. So how much energy is required by that person to survive? It is otherwise defined as the minimum amount of energy required to maintain life or it is the energy required to sustain vital functions like working up of heart, circulation, brain function, respiration, etc. So, it is the minimum amount of energy required for just for the functioning up of the vital organs like heart, brain and lungs. It is measured directly by the heat evolved or indirectly by the volume of oxygen consumed and carbon dioxide evolved per unit time. Next, let's see what are the factors affecting the BMR very first one it's the age during the growth phase during active growth the BMR is found to be high and it is getting lower when it is going to the old age so age during active growth it is high the BMR value is high and by old age the BMR is found to be lowered and in males it is found to be higher the BMR value is found to be higher in males rather than in females next factor is temperature temperature the BMR is found to be increased in cold the BMR value is slightly higher in cold temperature or when there is a decrease in temperature the BMR is found to be increased the reason is because an extra amount of energy is required is utilized by the body in order to maintain the normal body temperature in cold temperature the body is utilizing certain amount of energy in order to maintain normal body temperature next factor exercise in exercise 
there is an increased cardiac output the cardiac activity is found to be increased the circulation is increased by the increased cardiac activity so certain amount of energy is utilized for cardiac activity so uh, the bmr value is increased during exercise next one in fever in fever the bmr is found to be increased next factor thyroid hormones thyroid hormones what are the functions they are the one which is stimulating the metabolism the whole metabolic rate is maintained by the thyroid hormones so thyroid hormones stimulates the metabolism and heat production bmr increases during hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism means excess of thyroid hormones and this thyroid when there is excessive thyroid hormones the metabolism is also increased so bmr is found to be increased and in hypothyroidism there is lower bmr value because hypothyroidism means lower thyroid levels so this uh, lower thyroid levels relative to lower metabolism so lower bmr next moving on to the normal values in the normal value of bmr is affected by the body surface area so bmr is depending on the body surface area of the person bmr is expressed in kilocalories per hour per square meter of the body surface for men it is found to be 34 to 37 whereas in women it is 30 to 35 kilocalorie per square meter per hour in adults the value is fixed as kilocalories per square meter per day next terminology resting metabolic rate rmr it is the energy required to maintain life next term it's sda specific dynamic action it refers to the increased heat production or increased metabolic rate following the intake of food otherwise called as a thermogenic effect of food sda refers to the increased heat production or increased metabolic rate following the intake of food so you would have observed in your body after your meals after your intake of food there is an increase in temperature and you're sweating this the reason behind this is that certain amount of energy is utilized for the energy expenditure for for the digestion absorption uh, uh, transportation and uh, storage purpose of these digestive products so the heat extra heat which is being produced uh, soon after the intake of food is because certain amount of energy is utilized certain amount of energy is exp uh, is used or uh, the heat production is done due to the actions like digestion absorption transportation and storage of the digestive products due to energy expend this uh, the increase in heat production or increased metabolic rate is due to the energy expenditure for digestion absorption active transport of digestive products and production of reserve materials like glycogen and uh, triglycerides from digestive products this energy is trapped from the previously available energy actual energy is less than that the theoretical calculation next moving on to some basics on nutrients nutrition may be defined as a science of food and its relation to health it is concerned the primarily with the part of with the part played by nutrients in body growth development and maintenance so nutrients are required for the normal body growth development and maintenance so first one carbohydrates importance of carbohydrates dietary carbohydrates provide the major fraction of energy about 60 to 65 percentage of total calories is provided by the carbohydrates these carbohydrates are of two types available carbohydrates and unavailable carbohydrates available carbohydrates are metabolized by the body to give energy for example starch and sugar so available carbohydrates they metabolize in the body and they give out energy whereas unavailable carbohydrates 
cannot be assimilated and constitute only dietary fibers these unavailable carbohydrates they do not give they do not uh, give energy and they are mainly the dietary fibers so let's see what are these dietary fibers dietary fibers is mainly non starch polysaccharides our mainly non starch polysaccharide is a physiologically important compound in the diet so dietary fib fibers are mostly found in a uh, in our diet and it is unavailable or it is undigested carbohydrates they are found in vegetables fruits and grains it may be divided into cellulose and non cellulose polysaccharides this non cellulose polysaccharides include hemicellulose pectin storage polysaccharides like inulin and plant gums and mucilage these are all degraded to a greater of lesser extent by the microflora in the human colon so these are mostly non degraded or non uh, undigested by our microflora which is present in the human colon the soluble fibers dissolves in water they form gel and they are easily digested by the bacteria in the lower intestine so it is not digested in the stomach it is digested in the lower intestine soluble fibers they the dissolves in water they absorbs the gel forms and they are only digested by the bacteria in the lower intestine so since they are not uh, digested in the stomach they gives a feeling of fullness in the stomach and therefore they slows down the rate of uh, food leaving the stomach and is also found to have certain roles in heart diseases diabetes and certain colon cancer the soluble fibers are found in legumes and fruits next form of fiber insoluble fibers they absorb water they solen up uh, solen ups and they results in larger softer stools than which is easier and quicker to pass so insoluble fibers they also absorb water and they solen up and they helps in preventing constipation as they softens the stool because they are able to hold up more amount of water so during the absorption uh, during the digestion process and during the excretion process since these uh, fibers are having the capability of absorbing water and soleaning up they helps the stool to be softer because of the more water content in themselves they helps in making the stool softer and thus prevents constipation uh like uh, the soluble fibers this also uh, provides a feeling of fullness and helps in intestinal functions and also found to prevent uh, colon cancer these insoluble fibers are found in grains and vegetables next the benefits of high fiber diet they normalizes the bowel movements helps maintaining the bowel health and also lowers cholesterol levels fiber diet helps in controlling the blood sugar levels they can slow down the absorption of sugar and thus they can improve the blood sugar levels then this fiber diet aids in achieving healthy weight gain it gives a more of a fullness feeling and thus it helps in achieving a healthy weight gain more filling than low fiber foods so likely to eat less and we stay stay satisfied for a longer time and a high fiber food tend to take longer time to eat and to be less energy dense which means they have a fewer calories from the same volume of food these are the examples of dietary fibers cellulose non cellulose polysaccharides gums mucilage algal polysaccharides pectin hemicellulose lignin its sources and functions are also important you need to go through it dietary fibers are one of the important questions asked dietary fibers as such is been asked please go through this 
moving on to the requirement an adequate intake of dietary fibers was said to be 14 grams of dietary fibers per 1000 calories so for a reference of 2000 calorie diet it is recommended to have 28 grams per day okay moving on to the ne next component importance of lipids lipids in the form of neutral fats and triglycerides lipids are found to uh, increase the cholesterol levels and also leads can lead to higher levels can lead to cardiac diseases recommended allowance daily allowances is of fat is 15 to 20 percent of the total calories and puffers should be less than that of uh, 30 percentage of total fat and cholesterol also less than 250 milligrams per day next importance of proteins in our diet proteins are the only sources of essential amino acids so that's the importance of proteins amino acids essential pro amino acids in our body is obtained from the proteins which we take in next we move on to the nitrogen balance a person is a normal healthy person is said to be in nitrogen balance when his dietary intake intake of nitrogen is equal to the daily loss of nitrogen through urine through feces and through skin if the intake is equal to the loss through urine and feces and skin when excretion ex exceeds the intake it is called as negative nitrogen balance and when the intake is exceeding the excretion it is positive nitrogen balance intake more means positive and excretion more means negative is measured by calculating by the dietary intake of protein nitrogen and by measuring the daily excretion an individual nitrogen balance is depending upon the combination of the dietary nitrogen intake and its phys physiological state this nitrogen balance status can be in three forms in balance positive or negative in balance means the nitrogen intake is equal to nitrogen excretion nitrogen intake in the form of dietary amino acids and nucleotides etc excretion through urine feces hair skin loss etc nitrogen balance is said to be positive if nitrogen intake is more than that of excretion the causes uh, may be uh, during the growth phase during the childhood and adolescence growth phase the body is said to be nitrogen positive balance in during pregnancy due to the growth of fetus and in bodybuilding due to the increased increasing in the muscle mass next one is negative nitrogen balance that is the nitrogen bal excretion is more than that of intake causes due to illness starvation or post surgery factors affecting nitrogen balance in growth and pregnancy it is positive whereas in stress starvation and incomplete food proteins it is negative let's see what are the factors affecting the nitrogen balance first one is a growth during growth there is a positive nitrogen balance exists uh, during the period of active growth positive nitrogen balance exists next factor hormones the growth hormones insulin and androgens promotes positive nitrogen balance while corticosteroids causes negative nitrogen balance next factor in pregnancy positive nitrogen balance due to the growth of the fetus next factor convulsions that is after the surgical recovery after illness or surgery will be in positive nitrogen balance due to the active regeneration of the tissues next factor during acute illness there is negative nitrogen balance next factor chronic illness there are also negative nitrogen balance then protein deficiency deficiency of even a single single amino acid can lead to negative nitrogen balance then also during prolonged starvation it is also causing negative nitrogen balance